let's start off with the first question. Uh, there's a couple of different variants of this question, kind of in the spirit of 64-bit of versus 32-bit. This happens to be, I think, the phrasing that one particular person submitted. And I think it's a bit of a misleading question because an integer variable is, is a concept. It's not a type. It's not a data type. It's, it's a concept. Uh, so maybe, maybe the more pertinent question uh, would be, what is something like this return? In other words, what is the size of an integer of the int data type on a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine? And this is where things get a little bit interesting. And I'm going to give you maybe the te technical official answer first and then give maybe the practical answer second. Uh, officially, according to the C spec, an integer only needs to be able to hold uh, what's the number? Three thirty-two thousand. I believe it's this. The C spec says that an integer only needs to be able to represent or hold that range of numbers. So technically speaking, any sixteen-bit integer is capable of doing that. Uh, so strictly speaking, the C spec only says that an integer essentially has to be sixteen bits or larger. Uh, but in, in practice, this is kind of the practical answer, size event is pretty much going to return you four or four bytes on both 32-bit machines and 64-bit machines. Uh, we discussed on Sunday how long int might be different on a 32-bit or a 64-bit machine. And we also discussed how it might be different on Windows versus Linux. But then a long, long int is, practically speaking, consistently 64 bits, but could actually be implemented as more. And most of the things in the C spec, it says that this, this particular named data type needs to be able to store at least this range of values. And there's nothing stopping a particular compiler from using a data type that happens to be larger than that to store it. So that's the technical answer. In practice, strictly speaking, this is going to be four bytes in either case. Any, and there's a lot of different questions that can come up with regards to 32 or 64 bits. Uh, machines and topics. Any other questions on this topic while we're here? Okay, cool. Well, if you think of any more, feel free to pipe up later on as well. Uh, can I can I ask a question there? Absolutely. Yeah, so is there is there any rule of thumb in in terms of what would int and long size would be on 32 bit and 64 bit machine or as you said c spec only says you integers should only yeah should, and this i mean kind of at, at minimum kind of was going back to on on sunday which is you can come up with a an arbitrary compiler or an arbitrary operating system or an arbitrary uh, right. architecture that does anything you might want. But in the, in the context of an interview, what you'd probably safest to just assume what's most common. Uh, so assume that an integer is going to be four bytes on both 32 and 64 bit machines. It probably also is reasonably safe to say that a long int is going to be 64 bits on both 32 and 64 bit machines. Uh, oh, sorry, long it's gonna be 32 bits on, on a 32 bit machine, but 64 bits on a 64 bit machine, most commonly. Uh, you can kind of, I would say, ignore the fact that on Windows it's different because frankly, most embedded environments kind of more follow the Linux, Unix way of doing things than the Windows way of doing things. Uh, and then similarly, you can assume that a long, long int is gonna be consistently 64 bits. Uh, I think those would be kind of reasonable, safe assumptions. If you ask the random person on the street, how big is this? That's what the random programmer on the street, that's what they would tell you. And in a typical interview, the interviewer probably has that mindset as well. And you're just going to confuse them if you try and 
convince them that it might be a different number than that. Right. Yeah. I. I. I mean, I heard. I heard some not good. Sorry. Oh, so this is just one more reason why really these data types are things that you probably shouldn't ever be touching. And the more appropriate thing would be int32 or int64, so on and so forth. Like th these are the, the in an embedded world where size of, of bit bit length and byte lengths of data types actually matters more in, than many other places it's probably the most applicable thing to use these fixed size fields or fixed size data types to just completely get rid of the ambiguity. So if you're writing code as part of your solution to one of these exercises, just use the fixed length fields and then you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, let me, I mean, so it, what I, what, what I get from here is long would be at least 32 bit. I mean, if it's a 32 bit machine, it will be 32 bit. Uh, if it's 64 bit machine, it will be 64 bit. But then long, long would integer will always be 64 bit on even on 32 bit machine, right? That's is that. Uh, yes. Uh, long, okay. long would have to be at least 64 bit bits on any machine, although it is certainly possible that on a particular compiler or architecture, they might decide not to support different data types. Uh, but yes, 64 bit bits always is the way to think of that one. Okay. And and, and one, one more uh, question or, or just, yeah. So I, I read or I had notes somewhere like it says, okay, 64 bit Linux systems are LP64 and L stands for long and then P stands for point, pointer. So both are 64 and, but then 32 bit Linux systems are ILP 32. That means int long and pointer, all of them are 32 bit. So this LP 64 and ILP 32, are those some standard naming convention? It's something that that some came from somewhere, uh, which is not, not standard. I, I'm not sure, I just thought like if I, you have any idea. I, I would say that they're, well, not that they're standard or non-standard, I would say that the they're not particularly common ways of referring to it, or at least not in my okay. experience, common ways to refer to it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. this, this is helpful. I, I, I think I, I wasn't sure on long, long int. It ends up uh, being kind of confusing in part because of all these sorts of exceptions and so on. Uh, right. Which is, yeah, <laughs> another reason, like I said on Sunday as well, uh, uh, reading and writing code and particularly writing code that you know exactly what it does is and getting in that habit uh is going to be helpful for you in an interview kind of context where it's easy to make, make mistakes or forget off the top of your head how big something is if you just aren't in the habit of using those types at all then it ends up being less of a practical issue 